Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for WealthPress. It's 8.08 .08 in the morning. The market's going to gear up to open about an hour and 22 minutes, to be specific with you. And it's already the fourth of the year. Don't ask me where this year has gone, because I'm still trying to remember last year and the year before that. Anyhow, time waits for no one, as they say. The markets are uh, going, looks like they're going to open up a little lighter. They were up about 100 points, but right now it looks like tech is very, very strong compared to the Dow. And the S&P, again, is meeting us in between, but there is some upside on the technology sector. And we'll try to get into the nitty gritty of why, and I'll look at the charts to see if there's any uh, imminent follow through expected or not, because that is a question right now in everybody's mind. Now, um, again, Looking at the market today, as far as data, and I warned you yesterday that the market is going to stay fragmented this week. There's still people coming out back from town, uh, getting their refunds for Christmas gifts, traveling. My wife is traveling. A lot of people are traveling. And it takes about a week to focus back on the market. I mean, look, Christmas and New Year's is the big, big holiday, and people kind of take that as a very liberal way of, of, of vacationing. So typically, a week before Christmas and a week after New Year's, you still see a lot of that uh, stagnation, a lot of uh, monkey business in the market. So today is Wednesday, it's the 4th, and we've got mortgage applications, the IM, ISM manufacturing, and we've got the jolts, and most importantly, we've got FOMC. And I'll talk more about all of that in a minute. Now, it's a very, very interesting day, and uh, we may see some volatility because, again, the market is muted. You got to keep your eye today on the bond market because the bond market, even though it's muted, it has about 10 times maybe more liquidity than the stock market. And the fact that it's moving higher, even in the short term, is relieving some pressure from the stock market. The question is, is this just a pullback from the 110 to the 100 level or is this a, a meaningful reversal? In my opinion, it's just a pullback. It's a mild pullback before the market or before this index uh, or the bond market starts trading lower once again, which means higher rates. I don't think the Fed are going to move to a deflationary pressure, and I think bonds are not there yet. I think we're getting closer. I mean, look at the downside we've seen. It's been some downside from 150 all the way to 92, but I think we're, we're going to have more of a choppy period, kind of looking like this, if you will consolidation uh, for the first half of the year, and then finally upside. But I think we're going to start seeing this type of trading action throughout the bond market in the near term. Now, let's talk a little bit about pre-market action. Uh, three major indices all closed lower. Not a good way to start the year in the U.S. Market participants are awaiting the Federal Reserve's minutes for clues on what they're going to do next. Let me give you some, um, some preview. We're going to keep inflationary... Uh, period. We're going to see what happens and uh, we're going to see if uh, economy gets better and improves. Meanwhile, we're going to keep raising rates between 0.25 and 0.75 and they're going to be real loose about it. And then some, some are going to say we should have gone 0.50 and they're going to have some that I'll say we should have went 0.25 and basically it's going to amount to a bunch of nothing. The question is how will it impact the bond market in the short term? Keep your eye on the bond market. So three major indices closed lower. Everybody's waiting for the minutes. Tesla, Tesla plunged another 12% after the electric vehicle market missed Wall Street's estimates for their deliveries. It's not even earnings, it's deliveries. Apple slid 3.7% closed below the $2 trillion market cap value for the first time since 2021, following a report of a ratings downgrade um, and production cuts in China. That's That's something we've been expecting a long time. Also, the energy sector, and this is a big one, dropped about 4%, dragged by lower prices amid weak activity from China. But you see, the, the problem is, I don't think China alone is going to pull us or push us into a recession. And if you look at the energy sector, this is the XLE, which tracks natural gas and uh, energies. It's still holding on and still trading above the 200-day moving average. So I wouldn't be uh, ruling energies out just yet. I would wait to see what happens about midway through the year because I think we're still going to be in an inflationary pressure for quite some time and that is going to and and war. Don't forget about war. And that's not going to bode well for the energy sector. Natural gas or the pipelines, maybe not this half of the year, but remember the markets always are looking ahead of time. So be very very cautious and if we trade start trading above the 50-day moving average, that means energies are once again in play. 
So very, 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 very important. Let's uh, go back to our analysis. But again, just because China is weak doesn't mean we're going into a recession, which is what energies are pricing in right now. Because typically when you're in an inflationary pressure and there's no recession, uh, energies rock and roll. Fed rate hike rate. So 0.25 is baked in at about 70%. 0.50 is baked in at about 30%. This number has been moving higher, the 0.50, as the market's been cooling off, but it's still very low. And I think we are going to see another 0.25 basis point rate, rate hike. I think that's priced into the market. I think it would be almost devastating seeing that the bond market is pricing in uh, 0.25 to see 0.50. But again, it'll be very interesting to see how that number shifts after the FOMC announcement today. And remember, we still have not had any capitulation to the downside. So the night is still young. Uh, we're watching the FOMC minutes, as I mentioned. The report will closely watch further clues on whether central banks wants to go 0 0.50, 0 0.25, 0 0.75. Uh, but non nonetheless, they're bringing the rate, interest rate benchmark to point about 0.425 to 0.4 and a half percent for 2022, which is a little bit above expectations. We're gonna be focusing on the job openings for November, that report is coming out. They're looking at 10 million for the job openings, the manufacturing numbers coming out today. They're looking for the number to stand a hair lighter, 48.5 uh, compared to the previous number. Eurex gained a lot, a lot overnight. They did really well because we had economic data from uh, Germany that inflation has eased and Germany is the number one money maker in Europe. Uh, China did not do well. Uh, gains were limited as the country is still grappling with unprecedented infections. What's interesting is US energy markets or global energy markets are fearful of the recession, uh, of the lockdowns in China, but President Xi, he's going back and forth about the reopening and scaling back anti-COVID restrictions. So. If things are really that bad, why are they scaling back restrictions? China is is on its own. So don't rule out the energy market just because China's giving us negative news. We've seen energy rally really, really hard on negative news from China. So I don't buy that for a minute. The Nikkei stock closed sharply lower for the first trading day of the year. That's not good at all. Manufacturing is contracting for the second straight month. And if manufacturing is uh, contracting in in Japan, there's a really, really, really good um, odds or really high odds that they will continue uh, coming in softer here. Because remember, China just announced that manufacturing orders are down 40%. It takes a little time for that to run through the system. As far as earnings and stocks to watch, CarMax. Watch CarMax, it rose 1% pre-market. Uh, it had some insider buying for a total of half a million dollars, a little more than half a million dollars. So watch CarMax KMX pre-open. If we look at it right now, you will see that it's opening up about a dollar pre-opening. So that'll be a very, very interesting stock to watch. Now, today is Wednesday, and I don't think I've given you my short trades for the week. So I've got three stocks that I think are going to continue moving down. First one is Capital Bank. Capital One Financial. This is a consumer bank. They don't deal with a lot of businesses and they deal mostly with banks, with consumers that have second tier credit. This is not uh, American Express. This is Capital One. They're a smaller bank. They, their, na their name to fame came from uh, giving second tier consumers credit. Second tier consumers are not doing well right now. I mean, a, a 12 pack of Coca-Cola is $10. So consumers are not doing well. Every time we seem to rally hard or about four or five days, we seem to cool off. If this stock trades below the 91.68 level, I think it's time to short it. I think it's gonna go down to the 86 level. So Capital One, not a stock I'm looking at. Another one, or not looking at to go long. VFC, now what does VFC do? Manufacturers market branded apparel related products in the US, one year return, negative. Three year return, negative. Uh, last quarter net income, negative. This is not a, a consumer discretionary, men's and boys furnishing, work clothing. Uh, no, no, not in this economy. Definitely not in this economy. Uh, so what I would do is I would wait for the stock to trade right below the low, right at 27.30. And uh, I think we're gonna see it go back to the 24 level. Last but not least, this driven brand. Uh, dr dr driven brands, so let's see what driven brands do. Truck, original apparel, automotive repair. Remember, truck services. Trucks are 
trucks are used mostly for the economy. Commercial vehicles are not used for commercial. Commercial vehicles are used for businesses, and businesses are slowing down. The stock is down 18%. Uh, this is not a high flyer. This is a company that's going to get less orders this year. It's already trading below the 200-day moving average. It looks like it, it made a swing low right here at uh, 26 and then rallied, and it doesn't look like it's holding up well, and I think it's going to come back down to the 26 area. My suggestion is to sell it at 27, 23 or lower. That way you know it's lower and wait for it to come down to the 25. I think it's going to break the 25, 93 and head all the way down to the 24, 48 level. So uh, DRVN, VFC, and COF are my three chocks, st stocks, not chocks, stocks that are on my chopping blocks. I said stocks and chop at the same time. Uh, so those are the three stocks, DRVN, VFC, and COF. In terms of sectors, folks, we're in middle ground right now. 46%, 48%, we don't have a lot of um, a lot of upside downside. The only potential move we have is the energy sector, which is grossly oversold. You still have 57% trading above the 200-day moving average, but look at the 50-day. I want you guys to see how overdone it is. Um, so if you go look here, look at where we're at. This is the bottom. So I think energies will have just a little bit more to go. I mean, a hair possibly, and then they'll start turning around. And I'm optimistic because you still have the stocks in the 200-day moving average trading above the 200-day moving average. So technically, the foundation is strong by, while the swing is weak. So that's not something we want to avoid. That's something we want to trade, and I'll talk about that more today in my VIP room.